Yeah. Okay. 
So the concrete sets and hardens in the heart of the structure in the normal way. But the millimeter or so in contact with the surface doesn't set because of the chemical retardation. Then when you take the form of a and wash the surface down, you remove the cement basically, but the aggregates are still held in because maybe behind that.
stone all the way down the mountain. And these bubbles are usually referred to as blob holes, the LOW holes. But in America they call them bug holes, which is confusing because there are no bugs there. But um, the blob holes are usually small and round or oval, elliptical sometimes. These other holes, which are particularly thick, are very unusual in shape, and therefore you're looking for another cause of that particular blemish. When you look into those holes, you find the <coughs> aggregate pieces with no cement mortar filling the space between, with the arching or bridging action. And that's um, a problem known as aggregate bridging, which is caused by there being too much intermediate size aggregate in the grading of the materials used. These holes are, um, this is well, at least twice full size on the square wall. Um, so the holes, in, uh, the holes are quite small. And they didn't really show until the surface was painted. And then, of course, because the paint hasn't uh, come into them, they stand out as a blemish. And this actually generates quite a lot of argument in contract situations. <coughs> where people have produced uh, high quality concrete walls ready for the decoration, that is without any plaster. Another contractor has priced for painting and decorating money comes in and starts, he finds that the concrete surface, and particularly near the tops of the walls, where not all the air has escaped the concrete, are affected by these double holes, which Literally, you do not notice until you paint and find that you know, they really are there and they really have a problem. And the argument then starts, whose fault is it? Well, the whole problem is, is foreseeable because that is what the country is like. It has this inherent uh, tendency to, to have air bubbles in it. Unless you're precasting and you cast face down, and the air bubbles will vibrate up away from the base of the mold, and the surface you get is perfect. When you cast in situ, and you've got a tall wall or cone to build, you get these air bubbles. Um, it isn't the fault of the cone, that's the nature of the material. It isn't the fault of the painter who simply crossed, assuming a normal finish. It's a, it's a, I won't go into the detail because you can imagine the scenario and you can perhaps devise your own solutions but how do you order to specify this particular aspect of the project to avoid the acrimony of swinging the blame around and the unhappiness of the extra charges and costs that come into well, we're now, uh, we were in the Val, in uh, Northern Spain, for the offices we were now. Um, this was a project where I was the consultant of the Val Metro uh, via some of the customer partners. It appears in the current uh, edition of the architectural review. Um, a very brief description of the Bilbao Metro, a new underground railway system built in tunnels by the of the city. And you can see here a number of uh, precursor tunnels for the project. All identical and there's only a few of them. So it's a precursor's dream to be able to have some well-made steel moulds and from each mould you produce two, three, four hundred identical units and you turn them out to the right of one a day for the moulds so you plan your work in advance, you know how many panels you want for 
you're going to uh, accelerate the process and try and get two panels per day per mole, uh, obviously you're then introducing shift working, and you would need to introduce uh, higher temperatures into the production process to accelerate the rate of strength gain of the cement so that it hardens more quickly so that you could take it out of the mold at about nine hours instead of the normal 16 hours or so. But there we are, that, that's the, the nature of the project. This is uh, some of the panels of use just in one of the access tunnels uh, where you go down from street level to the first uh, underground. You see that although some of these units are not um, full rectangles based on a grid of 1.2 by 2.5 meters, that we believe, um, they are all made from the same molds by blanking off an edge and using just part of the mold to produce an element like that. That was just for the corner black top and it's nearly a big panel and the bit that you uh, you can also use that corner to produce that little bit that goes in there. So you can actually produce a couple of pieces out of one mold for elements like this. The only um, situation where it wasn't uh, feasible to do elements be cast was um, where there are tapered sections uh, where the tower increases in size. And so the transition pieces are done in situ. And the reason that they were the system of precast concrete was used was that my advice to them was that you, you will not get the quality of your seating if you attempt to do this in situ. Where you're trying to place walls and uh, roof to these tunnels all in one piece of concrete in place and get a uniform high quality finish which these panels are able to have. Remember these panels are phased downwards in a mould and therefore they are essentially free of air bubbles or blood bubbles. The holes that you see on them to another panel are fixings which you'll see in the moment. He's standing down the bottom of the table, taking the photograph of some of these people. This is one of the systems of fixing panels where they are bolted onto this cradle, and you see one of the panels being lowered by a crane and put into place on the cradle. The cradle runs on rails down this 45 degree slope, and they start at the bottom and work their way up.
We're talking now about vibrating it for about a minute. And then repeat the process by filling the mould to the top and vibrating it a bit more. So something in excess of five minutes vibration has now been uh, translated by a better production technique into two minutes vibration. And we've got cars which consistently come out in, in this quality that you see here. And the, uh, the two holes that are in the panel are these. This is a strip of material on the wall, and those are drawing pins, and that holds in the top.
this had to be a moulded surface. This, this was a requirement by the Department of Transport. They wouldn't allow that to be a trowel surface. Neither would they allow the top surface to be a trowel surface. And you see that the, the, this is the bottom of the unit when it's in place. That is a downstand edge which masks the edge of the uh, in situ concrete bridge. <clears throat> and that's the finish that they were trying to produce. But that finish is on the building. So we're using angular like this, which is very <laughs> harsh, angular, sharp edge. And you notice that whenever you do, uh, place concrete with aggregates in it like this, the aggregate always lays flat. You vibrate the concrete, which liquidizes it or fluidizes it, and the aggregate just settles down. And the aggregate will always lay flat. It's, it's, it's very nature. So the edges of the aggregate, which face the vertical face, are just points. And the best finish will be the underside where the aggregate is flat. When you expose it, you can see the stones, which is what you intend, what you expect. When you expose the vertical face, you've got a job to find the aggregate because all you find is the tip of it. And you've got to work into the surface to actually find it. And then we use this aggregate mix with it, which is the same granite graded down to very fine pressure material and because they thought that, that wasn't sufficient and so they put in some natural sand as well. So they used three aggregates, uh, cement and water, and it, these are the molds that they used, a whole series of them, with the, you see the idea, that bit with the S on it is where the concrete is put. The problem is elements upside down. So the place concrete up to that level, vibrate it, and then they put the other piece of the mould onto it and bolt that on to form the downstand edge. And meantime, the water is leaking out at the bottom, so we know what that's going to do. That's going to produce a permanent blemish in the surface of the edge of the unit. And then we uh, put concrete in the top with a little hopper uh, to enable them to feed the concrete into that narrow slot. And they vibrate it, of course, to get the concrete in. Remember they fill it to this level to start with, and now fill it to that level. And of course, we can believe on every one there's a mark where the vibrator is gone in that floor, trying to marry those two bits of concrete together. Which is why when you visit the yard, you see quite a number of condemned panels who just didn't satisfy the design requirements. So they're waiting on this for the people who have a job where it's going to be used. It is, isn't it? They call in the experts, people who might have an answer to the problem when they get to this stage. Can you imagine anything more ludicrous? Can we shock the vision? Shock the vision.
small sections of the elliptical column. These columns are two and a half meters by nine meters. from the top of one, they're reinforced with 50 mm diameter steel bars at 100 mm centers. And there are, on some of the columns, two rows of these. So the concrete that goes in has got to be fluid to uh, actually, you can't place the concrete down the edge of it, because you have to place it in the middle, and you have to get it to flow from the center to the edge and to be fully compacted. So when they place this uh, this concrete in eight meter high lifts, they have five people with vibrators going down into the concrete and all going at the same time. Uh, and they use the fluid concrete and they produce a pretty reasonable job. This is the sample. Uh, this is steel floor work, where the steel itself is about uh, 3 millimeters thick and reinforced, as you see, every, um, well, every um, 150 with vertical angles, or actually channel sections. So this is quite robust. And there's one of the columns showing a defect at the vertical joint. These were built 
certain problems that are possible and well known as problems and things that should be avoided. I'll try to give you a bit of guidance on the things to, to look out for, such as don't try and do the impossible. Don't try and emulate a horizontal attempt to finish with a vertical one, unless you're first of all proof that you can do it. And construction samples, which we always recommend, should be realistic, using the same techniques as the proposed quality structure itself. So thank you very much for your attention.